one another on Zoom. So please pass the peace. Amen. You may be seated. Our scripture text for this morning is Romans chapter 5, verses 12 through 21. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all, because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like one, like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many die through the one man's trespass, much more, surely, have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effects of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. But law came in with the result that the trespass multiplied. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that just as sin exercised dominion in death, so grace might also exercise dominion through justification, leading to eternal life, Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. Let us now turn in our red hymnals to selection number 641 and let us stand as we are able.
You may be seated. Eternal and gracious God and Savior, pour out your love and mercy upon us and draw us closer into your service. We pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Apostle Paul in this chapter in Romans 5 divides the human race into two categories. One is Adam and one is Christ. Now, what does this mean? What does it mean to say that we are descendants of Adam? Now, when Paul says that, he doesn't mean he's focusing purely on Adam as Eve's husband. But he's talking about Adam here in the original sense of the Hebrew, Adam, which means human being. And so Adam is a representative human being for the entire human race. And he is effective in the sense that he makes a mark, but he is a real problem in that he leads and stands for humanity in crisis and distress. Adam and Eve begin by eating forbidden fruit. Before you know it, know it, uh, their two sons are involved in murder. Cain murders Abel. And the whole history of Adam, the history of humanity, is one of corruption and injustice and violence. And we're very much aware of that. And the events that took place this past week in Highland Park, Illinois, uh, we see this again and again and again. But in the midst of the chaos and confusion of the world and the repeated failure of the descendants of Adam to live lives that are acceptable to God, in the midst of all of that, Paul makes this astonishing statement. He says, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. What does it mean then to be in Christ? And we are all in Adam, but then Scripture is telling us that we are all going to be in Christ. As in Adam all sinned, so in Christ shall all be made alive, Paul says elsewhere in 1 Corinthians 15. God enters into human history in the person of Jesus Christ for the purpose of overturning the heritage of Adam. Now, the problem with that is that people don't take that seriously enough. Christians don't take that seriously enough. But the mandate of Scripture is that God's grace revealed in Jesus Christ is much more than the power of sin and death. There are expressions of this in Scripture repeatedly. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, we read in Titus. And in 1 Timothy, we read that God is our Lord and Savior, and he is the Savior of of all people, especially of those who believe. And Paul writes in Romans 11, for God has consigned all to disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. God's grace overpowers the failings of Adam and the human race. And the problem, the tragedy is that we as human beings don't take that seriously enough that that power has been unleashed through God's grace. What is grace? Grace is God's mercy, God's love, God's kindness, and God's forgiveness. And it is for everyone. There are no barriers that can be set up over against grace. We have the term in our Reformed tradition of irresistible grace. Now, why don't we see more of the effects of this grace? Why don't we see more of mercy and love and kindness, even among Christians? Well, there are several reasons for this. Some people are skeptical, and they say, well, I have no problem seeing sin increasing. All I do is listen to the news, and, you know, whether it's uh, uh, the January 6th hearings or, or the latest shootings. I, I see sin increasing all the time. But where is grace increasing? Well, we have to first of all say that grace is still an operative force. It has not completed its work. Grace will not be completed until Christ comes again. But that doesn't mean that there aren't evidences of God's grace. And Paul talks about the need to see with the eyes of faith Think about this. 
Paul writing to the Romans in the first century could not have imagined a world in which slavery would be outlawed. He could not have imagined a world in which there would be laws to protect the sick and the weak and the poor. He could not have imagined a universal declaration of human rights. Now someone said, what, but what is the, what? this is so small. It's small, but it's not insignificant. God's grace is working. And when we look at the places of terrible tragedy, what do we see? We see the affirmation of Paul being carried out. We see the sin increasing and the horrible deaths of young people and older people. All that happened this past Monday. We see horrible things. That, But then, what have we seen since? We have seen grace. Now, the grace doesn't cancel out the sin. That's not yet happened. But that grace is really there. And we need to acknowledge that. Why isn't grace more clearly dem demonstrated by Christians? The world should be desperate to hear more about the grace of God revealed in Jesus Christ. And yet they seem indifferent. Some of it is just because people are evil. You know, Jesus says the Son of God came um, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But then he adds, human beings have loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. I'm sorry, it isn't all mental health. It's spiritual health. And it's the absence of spiritual health in our world where church attendance is on the decline and violent crimes are on the increase. The really disturbing part here is that among the opponents of grace, we have to include Christians. And that is a sobering fact. And until Christians can take that seriously uh, and acknowledge our complicity in the racism, the injustice, the brokenness of the world in which we live, then we're not going to see the total effect of what that grace can be. Unfortunately, Christians don't always know the Bible. You know, there are some Christians who say you shouldn't drink alcoholic beverages. Well, the Bible says God has made wine to gladden the human heart. Okay, on that one, I'm going with the Bible and not with the Christians. <laughs> we have been distressed by all the reports of sexual abuse in churches and among Christian leaders. And yet, that's not surprising when we consider the fact that Christians for, for generations, for centuries, have taught that sex is sinful. Well, sex in itself is not sinful. And in fact, the Bible celebrates sex. One of my favorite texts is in the Song of Solomon. Your rounded thighs are like jewels. Put that on your bumper sticker. <laughs> And yet, Christians opposing grace is nothing new. It happened in the time of the apostles. Acts 15 talks about the uh, Christian Pharisees who, who, again, wanted to force believers to keep the law, keep circumcision and the law, all right? <clears throat> the apostle Paul deals with the, that same kind of attitude in Galatians, in Philippians, in Colossians. And we see this fact that, that the Bible is being treated as a legal textbook. When Paul writes, as, when he actually says, as sin, where sin increased, grace increased all the more. That's the message of the Bible. That's true from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Where sin increases, grace increases all the more. And yet, even leaders like Peter can be seduced by the false promises of the law or of some other kind of requirement. How do we receive God's grace? We receive it simply by believing. There is no set of rules we have to comply with. We are, are to take hold of the fact that we believe in Jesus Christ. The Philippian jailer cries out to Paul, 
What must I do to be saved? And Paul answers, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved and your household. Peter has his own version, Acts chapter 10. God gives him a vision of what was for him, and certainly for the whole Jewish community of his time, unclean animals. And he is supposed to kill and eat these animals. And everything in him reviles against this. All of his training, all of his life as a Jew is being violated here. And he says, Lord, I have never done this. I've never eaten things that are unclean. But God says, don't you call unclean what I have called clean. Grace makes everything clean. And we need to take that seriously. The Apostle Paul writes, I am convinced that nothing is impure in itself. It is only impure to the people who think it's impure. And also, everything created by God is good. And nothing is to be rejected, provided it is received with thanksgiving. The Christian church has condemned too often and emphasized grace too few times. And we are at a crisis moment in our world. Yes, sin is increasing. You don't have to look far to find that. But God's grace is also is increasing more and more. No end, no limit, no compromise. What does it mean to say, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all? There are people who don't know that, who need to know that. We who have received the grace of God in Jesus Christ need to share that and present it to others. Because without grace, there is no hope, there is no life, there is no assurance. And this has gone on too long. The Bible has to be read as God's manifesto of grace. Nothing can overcome the power of grace. It is more, it is much more. Let us pray. Eternal and faithful God and Savior, we thank you that your grace is so much more than the power of sin and death. Lord, may we lay hold of that grace and may we live out that grace in a troubled and struggling world. We ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Leggett. At this point in the service, we take a few mo minutes to offer some of God's material provision back to God. The deacons will come forward and receive your offerings. And uh, in the meantime, we'll be uh, favored with uh, a duet. Uh, and uh, if you give online or by other means and you're here in the sanctuary, there are cards in the uh, pew rack in front of you that you can use to indicate that you've given via other means. Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes And I know he watches me. I 
God of all grace, our Heavenly Father, we praise you that you watch over us, that you give us much more than we need. We pray as we return some of your provision to you, that you will bless it and, multi- and that you will bless, with it you will bless the ministries uh, that our giving supports right here in Montclair and in the far corners of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in prayer. Father, thank you for the privilege we have to come boldly to the throne of grace and find grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. And we do have needs. And we're grateful that we can come to you with those needs. And as we do, we lift up Ken Meyer. Mercedes Sampson, Gail Lee, and Eli Richards and his family. We lift up Sandra Hebbard and Bob and Ingrid Reinfurt. And we cannot forget the people of Ukraine who are struggling against